Chapter 12 Alice's Evidence What do you know about this business? The king said to Alice. Nothing, said Alice. Nothing whatever, persisted the king. Nothing whatever, said Alice. That's very important, the king said, turning to the jury. They were just beginning to write this down on their slates when the white rabbit interrupted. Uh, Unimportant, your majesty means, of course. He said in a very respectful tone, but frowning and making faces at him as he spoke. Unimportant, of course, I I meant. The king hastily said, and went on to himself in an undertone. Important, unimportant, unimportant. As if he were trying which word sounded best. Unimportant. Some of the jury wrote it down important and some unimportant. Alice could see this as she was near enough to look over their slates. But it doesn't matter a bit. She thought to herself. At this moment, the king, who had been for some time busily writing in his notebook, cackled out. Silence! And read out from his book. <clears throat> Rule 42. All persons more than a mile high to leave the court. Everybody looked at Alice. I'm not a mile high, said Alice. You are, said the king. Nearly two miles high, added the queen. Keep playing. All right. Three, four. Well, I shan't go at any rate, said Alice. Besides, that's not a regular rule. You invented it just now. It's the oldest rule in the book, said the king. Then it ought to be number one, said Alice. The king turned pale and shut his notebook hastily. Consider your verdict, he said to the jury. Uh, There's more evidence to come yet, please, your majesty, said the white rabbit, jumping up in a great hurry. This paper has just been picked up. What's in it? said the queen. I haven't opened it yet, said the white rabbit. But it seems to be a letter written by the prisoner to, to somebody. It must have been that, said the king. Unless it was written to nobody, which isn't usual, you know. Who is it directed to? said one of the jurymen. It isn't directed at all, said the white rabbit. In fact, there's nothing written on the outside. He unfolded the paper as he spoke and added, It isn't a letter after all. It's a set of verses. Are they in the prisoner's handwriting? asked another of the jurymen. No, they're not, said the white rabbit. And that's the queerest thing about it. The jury all looked puzzled. He must have imitated somebody else's hand, said the king. The jury all brightened up again. Please, your majesty, said the knave. I didn't write it, and they can't prove I did. There's no name signed at the end. If you didn't sign it, said the king, that only makes the matter worse. You must have meant some mischief, or else you'd have signed your name like an honest man. There was a general clapping of hands at this. It was the first really clever thing the king had said that day. That proves his guilt, said the queen. It proves nothing of the sort, said Alice. Why, you don't even know what they're about. Read them, said the king. The white rabbit put on his spectacles. Where shall I begin, please, your majesty? He asked. Begin at the beginning, the king said gravely. And go on till you come to the end. Then, stop. These were the verses the white rabbit read. They told me you had been to her and mentioned me to him. She gave me a good character but said I could not swim. He sent them word I had not gone, we know it to be true. If she should push the matter on, what would become of you? I gave her one, they gave him two, you gave us three or more. They all returned from him to you, though they were mine before. What? If I or she should chance to be involved in this affair. He trusts to you to set them free exactly as we were. My notion was that you had been before she had this fit. 
An obstacle that came between him ourselves and it Don't let him know she liked them best For this must ever be A secret kept from all the rest Between yourself and me That's the most important piece of evidence we've heard yet, said the king, rubbing his hands. So now let the jury... If any one of them can explain it, said Alice. She had grown so large in the last few minutes that she wasn't a bit afraid of interrupting him. I'll give him sixpence. I don't believe there's an atom of meaning in it. The jury all wrote down on their slates. She doesn't believe there's an atom of meaning in it. But none of them attempted to explain the paper. If there's no meaning in it, said the king, that saves a world of trouble, you know, as we needn't try to find any. And yet, I don't know. He went on, spreading out the verses on his knee and looking at them with one eye. I seem to see some meaning in them after all. Said I could not swim. You can't swim, can you? He added, turning to the knave. The knave shook his head sadly. Do I look like it? He said, which he certainly did not, being made entirely of cardboard. All right so far, said the king, and he went on, muttering over the verses to himself. We know it to be true. That's the jury, of course. I gave her one, they gave him two. Why, that must be what he did with the tarts, you know. But it goes on, they all returned from him to you, said Alice. Why? There they are, said the king triumphantly, pointing to the tarts on the table. Nothing can be clearer than that. Then again, before she had this fit. You never had fits, my dear, I think. He said to the queen. Never, said the queen furiously, throwing an inkstand at the lizard as she spoke. (laughs) Then the words don't fit you, (laughs) said the king, looking round at the court with a smile. There was a dead silence. It's a pun, the king added in an offended tone, and everybody laughed. (laughs) Let the jury consider their verdict, the king said, for about the twentieth time that day. No, no, said the queen. Sentence first, verdict afterwards. Stuff and nonsense, said Alice loudly. The idea of having the sentence. First, Hold your tongue, said the queen, turning purple. I won't, said Alice. <gasps> Off with her head, the queen shouted at the top of her voice. Nobody moved. Who cares for you, said Alice. She had grown to her full size by this time. You're nothing but a pack of cards. At this, the whole pack rose up into the air and came flying down upon her. She gave a little scream, half of fright and half of anger, and tried to beat them off and found herself flying on the bank with her head in the lap of her sister, who was gently brushing away some dead leaves that had fluttered down from the trees upon her face. Wake up, Alice dear, said her sister. Why, what a long sleep you've had. 